What's up legends? Today we are looking at fetching every single pool that's been deployed from Uniswap V3 factory on the Arbitrum network and that's normally a task where we would have to scan uh, more than 200 million blocks. Uh, that's about the amount of blocks currently on the Arbitrum network so going through and finding all of those pools deployed generally would be a, a really hard task if you were using something like the RPC and we're going to show you here how we do it using hypersync and literally just of a couple seconds. So before we get going in the code and we actually um, do that, let's run through what hypersync actually is. Uh, it's a special read-only blockchain node designed very much for fast and flexible data retrieval. So you want to 100 times faster get data as opposed to use something like the JSON RPC. Um, it supports many different networks, it's got different clients and it's extremely useful if you're an indexer, block explorer, you're doing data analytics, uh, getting ML training sets, uh, there's various different pieces that make it super interesting. Um, and how it essentially works is you uh, use one of the different clients, Rust, Python, JavaScript, uh, you would choose a network, you filter for what you would like, whether that's uh, traces, logs, blocks, or transactions. Um, and then you extract the data we want. And the reason why this is super flexible is sometimes you're filtering for specific logs, but when you get that log data, uh, or when you filter for that log, you want to also return block data associated with that log. For example, if you are writing an indexer and you're indexing logs, it's useful to have block timestamp and, and other important parts. So it's extremely flexible. Um, and once you've extracted what you want, there's um, the format saving that you want. We'll get to now. Uh, there's various methods of transport. Um, so what I'm going to do is actually go ahead and just start by running this script uh, before I even show you what it does. Essentially, we're looking at the Uniswap factory and we are going to get every single uh, every single deployed contract by the Uniswap factory. And uh, this is what the event looks like, pool created. It's what we're going to search 200 million blocks for. And if I run, um, just got the traces on, you can see we are absolutely pumping through. We've scanned nearly 100 million blocks. Um, this is ticking up, so I don't know what timing you want to call this. Maybe this is 5, 10 seconds or so. But there we go. What we've actually done is in less than 10 seconds, we've scanned 200 million blocks and we've uh, decoded and saved all of this data to Parquet to have a look at. Very, very nice. Um, so just to show you what that looks like, if I use Parquet tools over here, and I inspect this uh, this data that we've written over here, this decoded logs.parquet. Uh, let's see what it says. You will see um, the compression that's used, XYZ, all these nice little things. Um, but if we scroll up, you can see these are the columns, uh, token zero, token one, fee, uh, tick spacing, and a pool that corresponds to this event to signature and you can see these 11,000 uh, rows essentially so we have 11,000 pools we found and extracted from the 200 million blocks and remember this is in less than uh, 10 seconds so generally scanning through this using a node would be incredibly fast difficult and hard um, I've written another little script if I run rye run formatter that actually just uh, formats all of this parquet and puts it in this uh, little text file for you to see. Um, and here are the 11,000 uh, formatted uh, addresses. So this is every single pool that's deployed, uh, Uni V3 pool on um, Arbitrum, which is really, really nice and neat. Now I'll show you quickly what's actually going on here. There's, there's three main components when you want to uh, import and use hypersync. Uh, number one is just creating the client and specifying the network. We could change this to Polygon. We could change this to uh, ETH or, or many different things. But for now, we're doing Arbitrum. As I mentioned, there's 35 networks supported. 
Now on this query over here, this is really the, the juice of it and what you need to understand. There's um, the from block and, and if you can understand and craft the query, uh, this is something we're also looking to improve more and more, but this is something that would be uh, yeah really great for you to take a look at and use. Um, there's firstly the, the filtering, right? So we are filtering and searching just for logs here. As I said, there's logs, blocks, traces, transactions, and, and this is what we're searching for. Um, it's this specific address. Um, as you can see, uh, this is the Arbitrum deployment of the Univ3 factory. And this topic corresponds, actually, I've gone and pre-filled it, uh, to this pool created log over here. Um, so that's exactly what we're searching for. What we could do is we could also add uh, more addresses. It's extremely flexible. And maybe what we'll go ahead and do now, now is uh, look for a uni v3 fork and add another factory and also grab all of those pools deployed. Um, so once we've done our, our filtering, what we want, uh, the next part field selection involves what data do we actually want returned? Um, so in this case, we're asking for both transaction and log data to be returned back to us. Um, remember, there's log, transaction, block, and trace data. So we can filter by this logs, but we could also ask for blocks, right? And in blocks over here, uh, we could, uh, for the block field, uh, just got some funny formatting going on over here, uh, we could block field uh, we could get uh, many different things like a uh, timestamp etc etc uh, there's, there's various different things uh, that we could uh, get which is really nice um cool so let's without further ado have a look at the last piece this uh, parquet config over here you can see we have the path where we're putting the data out to over here uh, this is a little bit around batch size and concurrency. Right now we're doing uh, 10 million blocks at once. That's the batch we're going for. Uh, this we could even uh, increase, we could decrease. It's, it's quite interesting. Uh, why don't we increase it to 100 million blocks and uh, just run it, see what it looks like. Um, it will be a, a much bigger query. Or oh, sorry, this is 10 million blocks as opposed to that. Um, you can see it's still smashing through. It's got automatic pagination. Uh, sometimes the request amount will ex exceed and only be able to get through 5 million blocks in that second, but you can see it smashes through it. So I'm just going to keep that at 1 million blocks. And this event signature is for us decoding. Uh, the current currency is how many requests you're making. It will split it up. And then once you've essentially decided on your, your config, your query and your client, um, it's essentially we're using this create parquet folder method with the client. You just pass in your query and config and that's what gets us back our data. So this is a very uh, rudimentary one, but this is just a nice way to show you how easy it is to fetch all the data. And if you want to learn more, at docsnvo.dev under the hypersync section you can look at the hypersync clients and there's more information available for the node.js the python and the rust clients and as we said there's still lots of improvements and development going on so we'd really appreciate uh, feedback fantastic let's leave it there